Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're gonna look at Ripple editing in DaVinci Resolve. And the idea behind Rippling is that it's going to try to accommodate and adapt to the change that you are making. And the way it works is that the clips to the right of the edit point or the clip that you are making changes to are going to move left and right in order to adapt to the change. And the clips to the left are going to stay in place, but they could get impacted as a result. And in any case, the overall duration of your timeline of your sequence is also most likely going to change. So we're going to look at how this all works in DaVinci Resolve by looking at four common examples. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. When we have a single track like this, to perform a ripple delete, all we need to do is to select the clip that we want to remove. Now all the clips to the right of it are going to move to the left by the same duration. And then the clip to the left of it is going to stay in place. So to execute, let's go ahead and hit shift delete. And this is also going to work for any clip in this timeline. Now, if we have a gap instead, all we need to do is to select the gap and then hit the delete key. This is going to automatically perform a ripple delete. And if we have a clip that is next to a gap and we're ripple deleting this clip, the same principle still applies. However, it is important to point out that the gap itself is not going to be affected because the gap is almost being treated like a clip. So unless we're trying to ripple delete the gap, the gap is going to stay in place. And when we have multiple tracks like this, the basic principle still applies. So when we try to ripple delete a clip, all clips to the right of it, including clips on the second track, are going to move to the left to accommodate the change. And this applies to clips on the second track as well as the first track. And if we're trying to ripple delete a gap instead, now all clips to the right of this gap is going to move to the left. However, the clip that is right on top of this gap is going to stay in place, but it could get impacted as a result of rippling. So when we have multiple tracks like this, while clips themselves may remain in place, parts of the content could get overridden as a result of rippling. And that brings us to our next scenario here with overlapping clips on both tracks. So when we select the clip and ripple delete it, only clips with endpoints to the left of it are going to remain in place. Everything else is going to move to the left accordingly. And that applies to clips on uh, both the first track as well as the second track. So another scenario here, once again, only clips with endpoints to the left of our selected clip is going to stay in place. Everything else is going to move to the left accordingly as a result of rippling. When you ripple delete gaps instead, then it's pretty much all video clips with endpoints to the right of the gap that will move over to the left accordingly to accommodate the change. And every other clip is going to remain in place. To perform ripple trimming, the first thing we need to do is to switch to the trim edit mode. And then it's really going to come down to where the edit point is going to be. So if this is our edit point, then all clips to the right of it are going to move left and right. Now, all clips to the left of it are going to stay in place. And by how much the clips to the right of it are going to move will depend completely on how much we are adjusting the clip by. So once again, once we're in the trim edit mode, it all comes down to where the edit point is going to be. And the same principle applies to gaps too. So we can ripple trim a gap by adjusting its in and out points and clips to the right of it are going to move left and right accordingly and clips to the left of it are going to stay in place. And it's going to work exactly the same when we have multiple tracks like this. It all comes down to where the edit point is going to be. Clips to the right of the edit point are going to move left and right, and clips to the left of it are going to remain in place. And when we have overlapping clips, then it all comes down to determining whether the aim points of the clips are to the left or right of the edit point. If they are to the right, then they're going to move. And if they're to the left, then they're going to remain in place. And the same idea applies to gaps too. And very much like Ripple Delete, when we have multiple tracks like this, just because clips remain in place doesn't mean that their content is not going to get impacted or overridden at some point as a result of Ripple Trimming. To execute a ripple overwrite, the system is going to look at where the playhead is first. And once it determines the position of the playhead, then it's going to look at where the nearest edit point is to its left. And that edit point is also going to become the starting point for the new clip. And also it's going to be used to determine 
what clips are to the right, which will move, and what clips are to the left, which will stay. So for our example here, if we go ahead and bring in a shorter clip to replace this one, you're going to see that all clips to the right are going to move a little bit over to the left to accommodate that change. And then if we bring in a much longer clip, then all the clips to the right are going to get pushed uh, to the other direction. And we can execute the same operation using keyboard shortcut Shift F10. All we need to do is to select the source clip and then hit the keyboard shortcut that it's going to execute ripple overwrite. And it doesn't matter if it's a longer, shorter clip or where the playhead is in the timeline, this keyboard shortcut is going to apply. And when we have a gap in the timeline, it works just like a clip. It's going to look at the nearest edit point to the left and then it's going to perform the ripple override accordingly. Now, when we have multiple tracks like this, the basic principle still applies. It's important that we're mindful of the position of the playhead and where the nearest edit point is to its left and what clips are to the right and what clips are to the left. And for our example here, even though it's going to be a gap, the idea is still the same. We need to look at the nearest edit point and the clips to its right are going to get adjusted accordingly based on the duration of the new clip and the clips to its left are going to remain in place. And if you're wondering why the override is only taking place on the first track, it's because destination control is turned on for the first track by default, and we can easily turn it on for the second track for both video and audio. And when we do that, the override is going to take place on the second track instead. However, ripple override is still going to affect both track one and track two, regardless which track has destination control turned on. So what destination control does at the end of the day is to tell the system where to look for the edit point and also where the override is going to take place. Now, when we have overlapping clips like this, it's still important to keep in mind the rules. However, it's really going to look at the edit point and the clip that is above it and split that clip into two different clips based on the position of the edit point. And the clip that is to the right of the edit point is going to move left and right based on the duration of the new clip. And the clip that is to the left of the edit point is going to stay in place. And that is going to apply to the second track as well. So if we turn on destination control for the second track and we go ahead and do the same thing, once again, it's going to look at the playhead and the nearest edit point to its left. And then it's going to split the clip that is underneath the edit point into two different clips. And the clip that is to the right of the edit point is going to move based on the duration of the new clip. And the clip that is to the left of the edit point is going to stay in place. And the same thing goes for gaps too. So it really comes down to locating that edit point and see if there's a clip above or beneath it and understanding that it can potentially split that clip into two clips that can have two different behaviors as a result of ripple override. Lastly, for insert, the system is going to look at where the playhead is first. And once it determines the position of the playhead, that is going to be used as the starting point for the new clip. And that is also where it's going to look at all the clips to the right and move them accordingly based on the duration of the new clip. And the clips to the left are going to remain in place. And when we have multiple tracks like this, it's also going to work the same. And when we have overlapping clips like this, it's still going to work the same. But here, it's going to split both clips on track one and track two based on the position of the playhead. And the clips to the right of the playhead are going to get pushed over and the clips to the left of the playhead are going to remain in place. And this is going to be the same uh, regardless of uh, you know whether destination control is turned on for track one or track two to determine where the insert is going to take place. Because guys, with insert, the idea is not to overwrite anything. The idea is just simply to uh, bring new content into the sequence. So I know guys, this is a lot of information, but uh, I hope this helps and I will see you next time.